Well, hello again, everyone. I've just been cleaning out the van and having a bit of a roundup, and I thought it might be a good thing to give you a rundown of all the things that are currently wrong with the van or that I think need attention over the coming months. Now the van is holiday ready. I would happily go away in it tomorrow and wouldn't anticipate any major difficulties. But these are little tidying up jobs and refinement jobs that really need doing on, on the van to keep it uh, comfortable and maintained really. Now this may be useful or encouraging to you if you've recently brought an older van. I get a lot of people say to me things like, well, Alex, all the work you do on your van, your van must be perfect by now. And, uh, oh, no, far from it. Uh, the van still has loads of work really to do on it. So just be aware if you are buying a van of this type of vintage, it really is an ongoing project. I see uh, occasionally posts on the Facebook of things, people disheartened quite quickly when they buy these vans and, and realize what a lot of work it is. So just be prepared for that if you are thinking of buying uh, a vehicle like this. If you've been following the channel, you'll know all the many things we've already done to the van, but uh, let's uh, go through the things that remain to be done. Let's start off with the roof. Uh, we're fortunate in that the van has no major leaks or damp or anything, but. You can see we have got patches of lichen on the roof and there is a little bit of corrosion towards the back. Uh, at some point I'd like to paint the roof. There is a paint available called Chromapol uh, which adds a sort of rubbery layer to the roof and uh, some increased protection. So that's potentially a job for the future. Also at some point I'd like to replace that front roof light. There's nothing wrong with it apart from the fact it's lost the fly screen inside but it always seems a little bit delicate. It's very thin plastic. One thing I don't think I will be doing that a lot of people do is adding solar to the roof. Uh, for the simple reason I, I just don't fancy drilling through uh, a dry roof uh, and adding an extra hole where there's there's no real need to. I do find that uh, we tend to wild camp uh, never really never really uh, done what they call wild camping or freedom camping uh, and we usually stay on sites with electric hookup uh, occasionally we don't we stay on uh, cls and cs's without electric hookup and then i find the leisure battery is more than sufficient for for two to three days it doesn't run very much really only the water pump uh, the controls on the water heater and the inside lights well, moving into the engine bay and uh, straight away, I think one job I do need to do is to get a new uh, spare tyre. That one's pretty old. I'm not sure I'd want to rely on that too much. Uh, probably should also paint the spare wheel to match the others, sh shouldn't I? That'd be uh, a good thing to do. As I say, the leisure battery is sufficient, but I would like to sort out a better split charging system. It, cha it charges very, very slowly off the engine and it doesn't charge at all when we're on electric hookup. So I have to run a wire out of the window and uh, connect up a separate battery charger if we're on a longer stay. So that's something to sort out for the future. We are probably do a service, uh, an oil change, air filter, that sort of thing. And I'll probably try and flush out the coolant system. Uh, the water in there is still very rusty despite having been replaced two or three times. The engine in the van is the U25 2.5 uh, diesel non-turbo unit and uh, whilst there's nothing wrong with it, touch wood, uh, it is uh, a little bit slow uh, in terms of uh, top speed and acceleration and such and uh, do sometimes find long queues behind us. I think a, a very interesting long long term project would be to replace the engine with something like a 2.8 JTD. And uh, there are um, files on the Talba Owners Club uh, website, if you're a paid uh, member, uh, where other people have done this. So you can follow uh, their 
uh, procedures for doing it. Um, not sure if that's something we'll ever get around to. That would require taking the van off the road for a while to do that. And uh, with the current situation with uh, diesel and diesel vehicles being slowly banned, I guess it would be worth doing at the moment, but uh, give it a few years, possibly less so. Uh, but it is something I'd like to do and would do if I had uh, more time, space and money. One of the top priority jobs on the outside of the vehicle is that you can see we have lost the white writing on one of the tyres. Um, I just clipped a kerb very slightly and it uh, brushed it off. So uh, yeah, that's got to be sorted out, hasn't it? Can't have that really. We've also got the odd uh, spot of rust coming through on the wheel arches, uh, some flaws in the paint here and there on the cab area and a couple of little signs on the scuttle. Now I'd really like to do a full respray on the cab area uh, in a similar fashion to how I did the bonnet. Uh, but I haven't really got the space and it's difficult outside here on a housing estate uh, to do it with drift of paint and that sort of thing. You'd, you'd cause some problems I think. So uh, it'd be nice to get the van uh, undercover uh, in, a, in a sort of big barn or something like that where I could... Uh, spend some time uh, refurbishing the bodywork on the cab. I don't know if that's likely to happen. Uh, I haven't really got any facilities like that. So we might have to do some patch repairs. I could take the doors off um, and do them inside the garage in a similar way to, to how I did the bonnet. That may be uh, something to consider. Uh, but certainly I don't want to uh, leave those rust spots too much longer. They need something doing with them really. Now if I really had the time I'd like to go to town with the old uh, metal flake and candies on here. You could do a really wild paint job couldn't you? Uh, flames and scallops and stuff. Ah oh, brilliant. Uh, but yeah uh, that seems uh, perhaps unlikely. Well maybe just stick with the uh, cow on the bonnet. Check out the airbrushing videos on that if you haven't already. Staying in the bonnet area, we do have some damage, uh, some crack and split kind of problems with the grill. Be nice to get that off and maybe try some plastic welding uh, to restore that. We could even uh, paint it a different colour, try some uh, plastic painting and uh, I don't know, maybe do something interesting with that. Another thing that's uh, sort of long term since we bought the van, the, the bumper is held on with these huge bolts. Uh, that's not, that's not, not really right, is it? <laughs> I haven't seen another van with a bumper held on with huge bolts like that. I'm not sure what's going on there. So it'd be nice to take that off at some point. The fiberglass has suffered. There's a bit of cracking and splitting. Uh, we've got a big divot here uh, where a lump of metal flew up and hit it. So might be nice to have a bit of restoration of the front bumper too. Uh, these big mirrors could do with a little bit of a refurb. You can see we've got uh, some quite severe corrosion on these arms. That'd be another nice little job. Take these off and uh, restore them a bit. A minor thing, but quite irritating, is the filler cap. I don't think it's the right filler cap. It's very fiddly and difficult to get on and off. Uh, it looks to me like it might be a Fiat filler cap. Um, and our van is of course a Citroen. I'm not sure why there'd be a difference because all the vans are more or less the same. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a right pain. Just in case any of you are wondering, I actually do talk to him. He doesn't really have to talk to the van all by himself. But hey, each to their own. Have a great day. Another thing I want to do at some point is uh, take the van to a weighbridge and get it weighed all loaded up with the bike racks and everything on the back just to make sure we are within the limits. I'm reasonably sure we are. There's a pretty generous payload on these vans, but uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt to check. I also think we're due for a new regulator and hose in the gas cupboard, so we should get that sorted out. Underneath the van is not in too bad a shape, uh, but I would like to get a general treatment on the whole of the underside of the van. Uh, I bought some of that Lanagard stuff to do the Celica, um, and I might try it on here, or alternatively, I might uh, use some wax oil or something. The leaf springs are sagging a bit. They're more of a uh, frown than a smile, so I'd really like to replace them. Now, I know you can get uh, spring assisters you can add on, 
and also a lot of people fit air suspension don't they but uh, I would rather replace the original leaf springs because I think either of the other solutions still leave you with the worn leaf spring so uh, whilst I quite fancy the idea of uh, air suspension later on I think I'd do both replace the uh, leaf springs as well Another one to fix is the tap on our waste tank. Uh, there is a video of us uh, replacing this waste tank. The old metal one was all rotted out. But I did reuse the spout from it and now the wings have snapped off the valve. So I have to turn it on and off with some water pump pliers. It's also quite a long way underneath the van. So if I replaced that, it would uh, make things easier on the campsite. Moving to the back of the van, the uh, towing socket has lost its cover. Uh, so that really needs replacing as well. That's been like that since we bought the van. Another thing, are these number plate lights. These seem to suffer because the door actually hits them. When you open the door all the way, it's a bit of a design fault. So I'm wondering if I can replace those. That's a bit on its last legs. I'd also generally like to repaint the coachwork on the van and get rid of all these old stickers. They've all suffered a bit uh, and uh, they're not very uh, attractive anymore. I have seen people do some nice work with uh, coach paint on this bodywork, so that could be uh, something for the future. And that wouldn't really require spraying, so we could do that outside on a nice day. Water filler cap needs a new gasket. That's all perished and worn. The fiberglass step on the passenger side has also suffered. The one on the driver's side is intact, but this one uh, was damaged when we got the van. Uh, at some point, I'd like to take those off and try and remake them. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult with some fiberglass. Should be able to make up a mould and uh, lay something up to replace them. Because they're quite nice, they're quite handy to step in and out of the van, but uh, that one is looking a bit sorry for itself. These mud flaps could also do with the uh, bit of attention or replacing. Right, let's move to the inside of the van. And uh, one thing people often remark on are our cowskin seat covers. Well, they're there for a reason. The original seats are quite badly cut up. Uh, the story is that the, the person who had the van before us was uh, an old fella and he became unable to drive it and his grandchildren played in the van and, and cut up the seats. Uh, which doesn't sound very nice, does it? But uh, yeah, that's why we've put these covers on. But Nikki would like seats with arms as well. And uh, I've heard of people replacing the seats with uh, things like Chrysler Voyager seats or Jaguar seats. Um, I don't think any seat particularly fits straight away. You need to make up some new uh, frames or modify the frames. So uh, we'll keep an eye out for some nice seats uh, second hand and we might end up replacing them. I don't know if uh, the seat would still swivel. This passenger seat obviously swivels round, so we'd have to watch that, because arms sticking out might reduce that ability, but uh, that's something we'll have to work out later. I've also still got the issue with the temperature gauge in the van. I've never got round to fixing that, uh, mainly because I haven't really had a chance to have a look at it. But the temperature gauge never really moves much above uh, the bottom of the uh, scale. The van is running fine at the right temperature and it does move up if the van overheats as you'll see in our thermostat video. Uh, but I really like to sort that out so the gauge is working correctly at some point. And we do have the classic issue in here of the sticky gear knob. Uh, so the gear knob is ripe for being replaced at some point because, uh, yeah, the plastic has just degraded over time. And whatever you do to it, it has a sort of sticky, unpleasant feel to it. And no one likes a sticky, unpleasant feeling knob, do they? Staying in the cab area, the door cards could do with some attention. Uh, my handle is uh, floppy and my window winder has fallen off. Uh, someone in the past has cut speaker um units into the door card in a sort of slightly odd place uh, when the winder is on it sort of hits the uh, speaker cover so both the speaker covers have fell off um and also there should be a surround around these release handles uh, which there isn't so uh yeah they, they really do need something doing the passenger side is not so bad um 
we can see the state of the the seats under there look with that uh, cover ruffled over but it's also missing a bin i don't know why there's a bin on the driver's door but not the passenger door uh, and also nikki would quite like uh, some sort of cup holder so uh, we might try and incorporate all that somewhere I actually think that's a job we might attempt fairly soon. I've been looking at uh, how you make up some new door cards. I might order some millboard and uh, something to, to cover it with and do that job fairly soon because it's uh, it might not seem a, a high priority job, but it annoys me every time I drive the van and look at it. I also can't wind my window down without a lot of faff. Again, still staying in the front, we've got this uh, radio uh, and CD player thing. Uh, I think it's a CD player as well. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Anyway, it's sort of a, a removable front thing, but it, it doesn't work. It's never worked. Um, it doesn't seem to have any power to it. Uh, so I really need to, to sort that out. It'd be nice to have um, a little bit of radio in the van. Moving back into the habitation area, uh, I think something I would like to do is possibly fit one of these uh, diesel heaters that everybody seems to be fitting and get rid of the gas heater uh, the gas heater does work but uh, it's not the greatest thing it's a very sort of wet heat isn't it, it adds condensation in the van it's not a pleasant type of heat so yeah I might I might get rid of that and add a diesel heater at some point a lot of the joinery in the van is not in great shape. You can see uh, a lot of the worktops and things, um, they're made from MDF and they have suffered due to uh, damage and such and a bit of damp over the years. So at some point I might try and do something with the joinery. Um, but I'm really not looking to do a whole refit of this van. I don't really mind the interior. It's a little bit tatty, but uh, it is still quite homely. So... Uh, I don't know, it would be a nice project to do, but uh, I think there's other things I'd prioritise first. I do need a more permanent solution to this tap though, it's it's gone wobbly again. So uh, there is a wobbly tap fixing video back in the uh, depths of the channel, but uh, that repair hasn't been really a permanent lasting one. And the tap is wobbly again, so we need to sort that out. In the windows, a lot of this uh, white trim is in poor shape. It's either become discoloured and brittle or it's falling out completely. These little plastic hinges where you unfold everything to extend the dinette and make the bed up, they're all uh, failing and starting to split. Not particularly hardy looking things anyway, just relying on the plastic being bendy. Um, uh, it seems sort of bound to fail after 30 years or so, really. So I need to do something with that. Now, unsurprisingly, the bog and shower area is uh, a room that I'm actually pretty happy with, having only recently done it. So, uh, yeah, fingers uh, crossed there's no further issues in here. Because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very happy with how that turned out. And everything works fine. Shower's lovely to use, uh, the bog is splendid to use, and yeah, happy days in the washroom. One thing Nikki has asked for is perhaps a little net um, to go across where these shelves are in the wardrobe area, just to hold things in a bit better. So that's a fairly easy job that we might do soon. So there you go, quite a list of jobs there, and I'm sure I've probably missed a few as well. Uh, so. If you're feeling a little bit disheartened because you've got a, a lot of jobs to do on your van then rest assured you're not alone but they're all minor things really and the van is quite capable of going off uh, tomorrow if required on a lovely holiday so you have to look really on the bright side at what does work rather than what doesn't so let me know in the comments uh, if uh, you think there's something in there that uh, I should be prioritising, what you think you'd tackle first out of that lot. Who knows if I'll ever get it all done, uh, and who knows if something will pop up that requires a more pressing attention and sort of jumps the queue. Uh, 
so yeah they are the list of jobs really that i think i've got to do on the van so plenty of material for upcoming videos no doubt anyhow take care and we'll see you on the next one well that's all for now if you enjoyed this video please share it with your friends give the like button a press and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more